Article 14, shall the Town of Hampton vote to raise and appropriate as an operating budget, not including appropriations by special warrant articles and other appropriations voted separately, the amount set forth on the budget posted with the warrant as amended by vote of the first session for the purposes set forth therein, totaling $26,836,977. Should this article be defeated, the default budget shall be $26,450,035, which is the same as last year with certain adjustments required by previous action of the Town of Hampton or by law, or the governing body may hold one special meeting in accordance with RSA 4013, Roman 10, and 16 to take up the issue of a revised operating budget only. Majority vote required, recommended by the Board of Selectmen, 5-0, recommended by the Budget Committee, 7-6. to six. The proposed operating budget figure is an increase of $237,546 more than the budget amount adopted in 2016. The net estimated 2017 tax impact of the proposed operating budget is 7.2 cents per thousand dollars evaluation. The default budget figure is a decrease of $149,396 less than the budget amount adopted in 2016. The net in estimated tax impact for the default budget is negative 4.5 cents per thousand dollars evaluation. Uh, is there a motion to open discussion on Article 14? Moved by Ms. Barnes, seconded by Mr. Bridal. I will turn the I'd article. I'd also like to speak on that, Mr. Moderator. No, I'm going to go first to our Budget Committee Chair, Mary Louise Woolsey. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. This was a difficult budgeting season. Figures were provided to the Budget Committee late, uh, and it was uh, certainly the most contentious uh, budgeting season that I remember in my years of experience. I'm going to propose a, an amendment to this article. I move to reduce the 2017 operating budget by subtracting $519,749 from debt service accounts 4711 through 4723, leaving a bottom line operating budget total of 26,317,228. And I will be asking for a secret ballot on this motion. All right, so first, thank you. Do we have a second on Ms. Woolsey, uh, seconded by Ms. Pierce. So we are uh, in Article 14 doing a bottom line budget, and as I understand the amendment that proposed bottom line as amended would be $26,317,228. Moved by Ms. Woolsey, seconded by um, Mr. Pierce. If I may address the amended motion, I do have the signatures. Yes, yeah, Mr. Do. Kravitz scribbled a little bit. But. No, no, I can. Uh, <laughs> um, so uh, we're going to have um, some commentary by Ms. Woolsey on the um, on the amendment, um, and there may be others. And then when we vote on this, we are going to take a secret ballot because I have in writing the signature from five voters who I think are all here, Ms. Woolsey, Mr. Pluff, Mr. Kravitz, Mr. Pierce, and Mr. Zanoy have asked that we conduct a vote um, by yes, no, secret ballot on the amendment. Ms. Woolsey. Thank you, sir. The budget as proposed, and, and let me just jump in just for clarity. Yes. I'm having you speak to your amendment. Yes. So why you want $519,000 taken Correct. away. And then after we have that vote, we may come back to the main right. um, article as presented or amended, and I'll let you talk further on the whole, but right now I'd like you to speak just to the amendment. Right. Why should 519,749 come off of Article 14? The proposed budget figure, as you can see, was very narrowly approved. There was only a one vote difference when this came to the final vote on the Municipal Budget Committee. The proposed figure of 26,836,977 is uncomfortably close to $27 million. We are creeping up very, very rapidly on annual budgets, 
And this is certainly a concern to many, many taxpayers in this community. The amount that I suggest removing represents the total of the final payment, which was made in 2016, of the $3.1 million article that started in 2011 to fund the mechanical packers, uh, the trailers, and the first shipment of the carts. Uh, that is not needed any longer. This budget keeps skyrocketing. We have two management positions, just the salaries alone, $204,000. We have an attorney making $100,000 a year. We have, we... No, no, let me, she's got the floor and she's gonna keep the floor, so go ahead. Okay. We have positions being created within the, within the budget, like an evidence clerk, uh, three quarters of the coming year. We keep creating positions, and I will say that, in spite of the fact that I got into a little trouble on my email, the, telling the members of the committee the feedback that I was getting on pay raises, uh, we've got to start pulling in and tightening the belt. I believe that the town can function very comfortably with the new figure that the uh, moderator has, and since we tend to run to very large surplus at the end of the year, don't forget, we're doing tax bills twice a year now. This is not a situation like in the old days when people only paid their taxes on December 1st. We do have a reasonable cushion, and I think it is sensible to start pulling this back. In addition, the tendency of the public in recent years has been to vote for the lower of the two figures. So in this case, the public would probably vote for the default figure, 26,450,000. This gives the public an opportunity to validate the budget, to vote for a concise budget figure that will give us a little bit of a breather in this escalating budget season. Thank you, Ms. Wolsey. Mr. Pierce, do you wish to be heard on the Wolsey Amendment? All right. Michael Pierce, uh, 84 Lock Road. Uh, the 519,000 is an interesting uh, piece of information because, like Mrs. Woolsey said, that payment stopped at the end of six, 2016. So if one was to keep everything else equal and just look at that alone, your, tax, your total tax uh, expenditure for the budget would be $519,000 less. However, it was not mentioned, I don't know if it was error by omission or on purpose, I can't vouch for that, which way it happened, but it was not mentioned at all in any of the uh, consideration of the budget by the selectman or, or the town manager. When it got to the budget committee, we picked up on this by some effort of scrutinizing the budget, and we immediately j jumped on that. And when you add 519,000 to the proposed increase that the selectmen are asking for in this warrant article, it's nearly $800,000. So if we start increasing our budget by a million dollars every year, guess what? Some of us aren't gonna be able to pay our tax bills. Maybe some of you besides me at this meeting, okay? So we have to keep an eye on things. I mean, that we just have to do that. And the other thing that really bothers me about this budget number that we this proposed is that going into the end of 15 and 16, we had, going in so towards the end, you could realize that we had about a million dollars plus of un, 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 money that would not be necessary to fund the budget. And as we got closer to the end, it got all managed to get spent, most of it. Okay, so what I'm trying to say is they have a million dollars plus, too much in the budget, plus we paid off the 519,000. So I think we should go down this path and try to slim down the budget just a little bit because if you've been following the increase in taxes the last couple of years, they're starting to go up again like they did in the 80s where everybody got so upset they started turning everything down. So I think we need to slow it down now rather than waiting till we all can't afford to live here. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Pierce. Mr. Jones. Good 
Mr. Moderator, I'd like to ask the Budget Committee chair, Chairwoman through you a question. This uh, motion was made at the Budget Committee, the same motion. And uh, I'd like her to confirm that it received two votes in favor. Is that correct? Okay. So it received two votes in favor. One was the motioner, Mr. Pierce, and the other one was Mr. Moore. Mrs. Woolsey posed it. And now she proposes it. And I don't understand the argument here at all. I absolutely oppose this amendment. It's just a broad sweep. Oh, we're spending too much money. Let's get some detail. Didn't hear any detail at the Budget Committee when it was proposed, when you opposed it. And now that you propose it, I still hear no detail other than a bunch of complaining. So, Mr. Moderator, I want the world to know I do not support this amendment, although I do think the budget, uh, and I did, by the way, vote against the budget for other reasons, more specific than just, hey, let's cut 500 plus thousand dollars out just for the fuck, out just for the uh, yucks. Sorry. All right. Thank you. Um, we've heard from some budget committee members. Let's hear from the town, Mr. Welch, and then Ms. Barnes, if she wishes to be heard as well. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Frederick Welch, town manager. Uh, I rise on this amendment to the article simply because it's unlawful to amend the debt service of the town. I am by law going to have to pay that $519,749 out of the debt service account whether the town cuts it or not. Uh, we are required to pay all of that debt. If that goes on the record, that's going to go on the record of our, our bonded indebtedness rating. It's going to cause severe problems. You can take it out of anywhere else in the budget. That's not my problem. My problem is you cannot take it off a of debt service. It's not legal in the state. Thank you, Mr. Welch. Thank you, Mr. Welch. The motion um, cited some uh, budget lines as support for its, um, or the, the motion to amend, but this is a bottom line budget, so it will be uh, incumbent upon the town officials to work with whatever number the voter gives um, to the, the board and the manager. Um, Ms. Barnes? Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Um, I'd just like to explain a couple things. Now, I'm speaking on the original format. No, no, you got to get, at this point in time, you have to confine your remarks. I'm sorry if I didn't okay. make that clear. To that the, is okay. Uh, to the Woolsey Amendment. And uh, I think we're going to try to take a vote on that amendment. If you have anything to add, pro or con, to the amendment, um, please do so now. Otherwise, I think yes. we'll take a vote. I do. Yes, um, 519000 was paid down by the town. That was partly made up by refinancing that our finance director did that has saved us approximately $437,000. And I would like to also say that it would be very convenient if the amount of debt that we all paid back meant that we had that money in our pocket. But that is not so the case. Therefore, taking $519,000 out of the budget just because the town has actually paid off their debt does not make sense to me. Thank you very much. All right, so our, um, our procedure for a yes, no ballot, we haven't had one in a couple of years, so let me review that with you. In order to vote, you must have your green voter card, you must have your um, wristband. And I'm gonna ask if you could come down uh, toward the front of the room and go through these doors. Um, you'll go to the, excuse me, You'll go to the supervisors of the checklist. They're going to stamp your um, your green voter card with a pink figure. So let them have a few uh, minutes to get uh, get set up and prepared for you. They will give you a yes/no ballot. So how do you fill that out? Yes, if you fill in the yes bubble, you are in favor of Ms. Woolsey's amendment to reduce the budget by. $519,749. If you fill in the no bubble, you are against that uh, amendment. So with those instructions, and just give a, a second or two uh, to let the folks out in the hall, then you're going to take that voter card and you're going to insert it in our, uh, we have two um, voting machines out there. 
um, and we may have both of them going, we may have just one, but you slide them in. In order to preserve the privacy of your vote, you can turn it over, nobody will see it. Also, we'll have some tables set up in the hall um, so that you can cast your ballot. We have voter shields if you're concerned about uh, privacy, but if you turn it over, nobody will see it, and you can put the ballot through without any um, any showing. Uh, Mr. Moderator, may yeah. I ask a question? Sure. If it is not legal to take, I thought it was proper no. when I made We're dealing at bottom line. Button. No, I understand that. But if the problem is where it's coming out, I'd be happy to explain. It's expunge. a bottom line. It's coming right out of the bottom line if it comes out. All right. Okay? Thank you. All right. Thank you. All yeah. right. So we're going to get set. I'm going to go around and we'll do this uh, ballot. We'll give you sufficient warning before we're going to shut it down so you don't have to be the first voter in line. You can stay in your seats and, and let uh, folks go through. And I will announce uh, when we are going to shut it down so that you have time to make sure you vote. Thank you. We'll come back into session. I will announce the results of the secret ballot vote on the Woolsey Amendment. Uh, uh, those in favor of the Woolsey Amendment, 11. Those opposed to the Woolsey Amendment, 68. I declare that the Woolsey Amendment has been defeated. We are now on Article 14 as it is printed. Is there anyone who wishes to be heard on Article 14? as it is printed, Mr. Jones. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. I just wanted to correct the, the record. Uh, the Budget Committee Chairman made some statements about the budget, uh, which I don't, do not believe necessarily reflect the opinion of the entire Budget Committee. A particular one that caught my attention, Mary Louise, was your statement that this is the most contentious year ever. Uh, well, Mr. I did, Jones, I do not... No. Yeah, however we characterize it, your commentary is valuable. You're a member of the Budget Committee, so if you could speak to, to the, the end product, I guess. What I we am. Have. Okay. Well, right. just, as, as, just as the Chairman was when she was speaking okay. to the end product. This was not the most contentious year that I have witnessed. I think if you ask the former Budget Committee Chairman <coughs> that she would likely agree with me on that point. It's been a challenging year. Every year has been a challenging year in a different way. This year has no doubt been a very challenging year. The budget is what the budget is. I did not vote for it for reasons that I won't get into right today. There are specific reasons, and they're all principles-based. And uh, I think this process that we experienced this year was in a final product, not dissimilar from previous years, except for the one that perhaps the former chairman might speak to. She's around. That would be great. I'll yield to her. Thank you, Mr. Jones. Ms. Latimer, would you like to speak to Article 14? Thank you. Um, Irene Latimer, 251 Mill Road, former Budget Committee member, former chairman. Um, I think what Mr. Jones says is quite true. There have been contentious years larger amounts of money, but this is not one of them. And I think the purpose of my commentary to all of you in this room is the essence of consistently trying to paint the Budget Committee as adversarial. The Budget Committee voted on this article. And though it was a slim margin of <coughs> one vote, it cast its vote in approval for this article. When people take it upon themselves and go rogue, they sometimes paint a negative picture on the entity that they represent. I would like to see better cooperation in this town between the Board of Selectmen, the Budget Committee for that matter, any other elected body. These bodies are elected to serve a distinct purpose. The Budget Committee in this case is elected to oversee the budgets that are presented. And for those of you in this room have followed, who have followed the budgets for years, that seesaw has gone back and forth. There have been times that the budget committee has been out here supporting fire, supporting police, when even the voters weren't doing that. Otherwise, you would not have two parts of a police a fire station built at one time. You would not have had a fire boat. 
You would not have had people on the budget committee who spent their time in subcommittees with SAU 21 to figure out what the best thing was for this town. And the breakaway from SAU 21 ended up being the most inspiring thing that we could have done for our children in this town. I want to remind people of that, and I want to remind people who choose to go rogue and then lay that on the budget committee to go back and see what the budget committee truly represents and what their job really is truly to do. The vote was 7-6. I would say, Madam Chairman, you should have respected that. And I will ask the voters to respect the budget. You have two choices. They're not very far apart. And I know that I came in here in a year and asked you for one, to reduce it by 1.6 million. I was off a little bit. You only had a million dollars surplus that year. But that being said, this budget was worked out, worked through. I would like to see in future years it being worked out better with more considerations and a lot of this back and forth would go away. There are things that the Budget Committee does need. I thank you for the commentary. Um, but this is a serious issue, and all personality should be taken out of it. It should be what the function of this Warren article is for the amount of work done by not only the department heads, the town manager, the board of selectmen, and finally, the Budget Committee that the work goes into to deliver to you as well and as honestly a prepared budget as can be to give you the opportunity to make your choices. Thank you, Ms. Thank Latimer. You. Uh, Ms. Barnes, I um, clamped down on you earlier. Would you like to speak to the budget as it's presented? Yes, I simply would just like to point out to the public that the operating budget, as Ms. Latimer greatly pointed out, approved by both the Board of Selectmen and the Budget Committee, is a 0.9% increase from last year. That's relatively flat. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Barnes. Ms. Woolsey, before I get to you, is there anybody else who wishes to be heard for the first time on the budget? Seeing none, Ms. Woolsey. If it had not been for your Municipal Budget Committee, ladies and gentlemen, no one would have caught the $200,000 overstatement on the collective bargaining articles, no one would have caught the gasoline projections, and no one would have caught the deficiencies in the presentation of the default budget. The Budget Committee is the taxpayer's friend in this community, and if there are a few little squabbles and little problems, it's all in behalf of working and be in working for the taxpayer. Thank you, Ms. Woolsey. Anyone else wishing to be heard on Article 14? Seeing none, we'll move on to Article 15. Article 14 will appear on the ballot as printed. Article